Revolt family, what's the business? It's your guy, Rodney Rakai, here with a special episode of Revolt Black News. Now, if you have not seen some of the headlines regarding the 11th Amendment to the Belize Constitution, that is why we are here today, because it is a bill targeting the former bad boy, MC Shine, who just so happens to be one of the most powerful politicians in the Belizean government. So what in the hell is going on? Well, that fateful nightclub shooting on December 27, 1999 that we all remember is now coming back full circle today in 2021 and of all places in Belize. But how and why now? Well, we're going to break it all down from Belize to Brooklyn and then back to Belize. This is a very special edition of Revolt Black News. Let's get into it. Born Jamal Michael Barrow in the Caribbean country of Belize, Sean's family moved to Brooklyn at the age of eight, where he immediately took up rapping. Years later in 1998, a year after the tragic death of the notorious B.I.G., Sean Love Combs' label bad boy record Sign Shine, who many viewed as Combs and Protégé. Bad Boy is, you know, one of the most iconic record labels ever and i'm certainly happy to have made my contribution at a very defining moment in bad boy when i used to go to puff and i used to you know rap my songs for him and he would tell me oh you know it's all right and i would argue with him you know what do you mean it's all right you know this is the best thing you ever heard and he would tell me he said listen if you have to argue with me to tell me that it's the best thing i ever heard then you need to go back to the drawing board because I want you to present to me the best thing I ever heard because that means I'm gonna make money. That means, you know, we're gonna be hot. Bad Boy was the greatest academy, uh, you know, the greatest university of music that, you know, I could have ever went to. You know, I learned so much. I learned to be an entrepreneur. I, I own my own publishing company. So it was the greatest university, the greatest opportunity, you know, that a musician could have ever had. Now, as things were looking up for Sean, we know just how quickly things can take a nosedive. On December 27th, 1999, Sean was involved in a nightclub shooting that would change the course of his life. Now, a lot of y'all know the vibes with the court case. It was a long process, and that takes a toll on a man's head. The height of his career in 1999 that Shine was involved in a New York club shooting. Along with rap impresario Sean Combs and then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez. And I was just praying. From the precinct, you understand, to when I got my bill, you understand? The next day I was like, yo, I gotta be in the studio, you understand? Because it was like that whole year, man, I was just getting my mind right. He was about to shoot the video for Bad Boys and all that, you understand? So I was just praying, like, God, you know, you know, you know where my heart is at. You know how I do, you know I ain't wrong, you understand? So just give me this chance, man, you know what I mean? In the end, in March 2001, Puff was found not guilty on all charges, and Shine was convicted of first-degree assault, reckless endangerment, and possession of an illegal firearm. He was, however, acquitted of the attempted murder charge. Shine, of course, shared his thoughts on all the injustice. Uh, you know, I was defending myself and my friends, and, you know, I was convicted of a reckless assault, which in Belize, I would have had to pay a $10,000 fine as a first-time offender. Uh, you know, the max would have been two years. Um, so, you know, we, we have a problem in the United States of warehousing uh, young black men, criminalizing them. And, you know, I think there, there are movements for sentence reform and criminal justice reform, but that was a gross uh, injustice, uh, you know, to have to get 10 years as a, as a first time offender for a reckless assault, you know, when I was really just uh, defending myself. Now, 10 years is a long time, and the American prison system for many Black Americans can actually become a life sentence in and of itself. But as artists do, they make art and Shine found a way to put his pain into the music and managed to record and release his album, Godfather Buried Alive, while still in prison. It sold over 900,000 units and made its way to the fifth spot on the Billboard chart. Shine was granted early release in 2009, but because he had never become a naturalized U.S. citizen, he was then deported to Belize. But as the story moves to the Caribbean, it doesn't get away from Brooklyn, as we'll see. You know, my voice and my experience is global. It's not just something that speaks to Belizeans or to people in Brooklyn or Los Angeles, but people in Africa, 
you know, people in Latin America, people all over the world that are in inner cities, that are disadvantaged, uh, that are overlooked and underprivileged, uh, my story resonates with them. I used to pray that one day I'd be a billionaire so that I could, you know, go back to Belize and transform my nation. Um, so Belize was always very, very important to me. And, you know, nothing that I've ever accomplished is as valuable, as heartwarming, as satisfying to my soul as the things that I do for people in my constituency in Mesopotamia. Uh, there's nothing else I'd prefer to do. And that's a very good space uh, to be at in your life. Now deemed the Honorable Sean Barrow. Sean is the leader of the opposition in the Belizean government as a member of the Belize House of Representatives from Mesopotamia. Well, I think my entire life prepared me for the role uh, that I have now, which is, you know, a servant uh, leader. Uh, you know, my forefathers, my political ancestors had a mantra of being nation builders, you know, let, let's build our nation. And that's what it really is about for me. Parliament is uh, similar to the United States Congress and the United States Senate. Uh, the only difference is our senators are appointed. Um, so I would be more of a Congress uh, person uh, because we are elected. Through music, I believe we serve. My first album wasn't just, you know, uh, obscene violence. I had an objective, you know, but I had to, you know, introduce myself to my target audience and build a rapport with them. Uh, it was always about more than me. So now is the moment to ask Sean about the 11th Amendment, which is the whole reason that we are here today. But before I can do that, it is absolutely vital for me to reflect and let everything culminate on what's truly at stake for him. Not just as a politician, but as a bad boy legend, as a black man, as a husband, and also as a father. See, before his deportation and incarceration, Sean had his ascent as a hip hop artist and as a black immigrant in American society. And then he had all of that taken away. As a prisoner, he repaid his so-called debt to society for almost 10 years and then got sent back to his home country of Belize. And now the events of the New York shooting that he served time for are being used against him. So if we're being honest about what's at stake for Sean, and if he already repaid his so-called debt to society, then the 11th Amendment has the potential to bankrupt his soul. I want to get into the 11th Amendment proposed to the Constitution of Belize. Um, this has been making a lot of news as of late. And the amendment seeks to disqualify those who have served a prison sentence following a conviction of a crime from being elected as a member of parliament. You obviously were incarcerated here in America, not Belize, for yeah. several years. So, you know, if that yeah. passed, would this apply to you? And do you think that this is an attack by political opponents trying to unseat you? Yes, you know, um, it's a very dangerous direction that the PUP government uh, is going in. Uh, you know, when you start altering the Constitution uh, to fix a problem that doesn't exist, there is no problem of rehabilitated, reformed individuals going to the House of Representatives and committing crimes. There is a problem of upper class oligarchs uh, going to the House of Representatives, those with PhDs and law degrees who go there and commit gross crimes of corruption and public breach of trust and steal millions and millions and millions of taxpayers' dollars and thousands and thousands of acres of land and, and just, you know, pillage the public coffers. There's a problem with that when the elections are called. If they don't feel that I'm suitable, if they don't feel that I'm fit, then they won't vote for me. And that's the ultimate check and balance. You know, United States, a criminal record doesn't prevent you from being a congressperson or the president of the United States. The only person that could stop you are the people that are going to go out and vote. So this is very dangerous to weaponize the Constitution to target the leader of the opposition. You know, it's really no different than in other countries where you see they jail and arrest 
uh, the leaders of the oppositions or, or, or political opponents. I've gone the last 23 years with, without any arrests, any convictions, and I've completely turned my life around. That should be an inspiration to those people in marginalized, disadvantaged communities that they too can turn their lives around. So really, I should be held up by both political parties to say, this is what you guys should do. Stop killing each other, go to school, turn your lives around, and one day you could be the leader of the opposition. And even heavy hitters like Rap A Lot Records CEO Jay Prince tapped in for their support of the homie Sean. Police is a place that I love dearly. I love it so much until I actually own uh, a few islands out in police. Politic game is one of the dirtiest games, man, I ever witnessed. And I hope that those in Belize, the youth, and, and those that have good thinking ability would unite, would uh, shine and stand against this, these politicians, man, these politics that want to stop brothers from having, uh, you know, definitely meaning for brothers like shine from, from making a difference in, in, in saving lives that I know need to be saved out there in Belize. But it's not just Jay Prince. Diddy and, 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 and Fat Joe and Khaled and there's a lot of people uh, that, that reach out, a killer Mike, a Congresswoman uh, Maxine Waters. There's a lot of people that see the evolution, see the transition, see the transformation and, and they love it. You know, this is black excellence, the epitome of black excellence. This is what, you know, uh, I believe maybe Tupac uh, w would be doing right now. You know, we, we've always had leaders in the hip hop community that wanted better, you know, for the societies that consumed our music. And so I'm not doing anything different than what Jay-Z did in 4444, where he's saying, you know, instead of buying a Patek Philippe, you know, why don't you buy a bunch of buildings? Why don't you, you know, buy the entire community? And so I'm doing the same thing. You know, I, I'm an example, not just for the people here in Belize, but, you know, for the people all around the world that look like you and I, and even the people that don't, you know, that, that are concerned with disadvantaged and underprivileged people. And while celebrity perspective is important, it always comes back to the citizens. So Revolt actually got the chance to speak with the citizens of Belize this week who shared their thoughts on the 11th Amendment as well. Here's what they had to say. As a nation, Belize has more pressing matters to attend to. I do think there are many things Shine Bauer can do as a leader of the opposition, but I do think the one main thing we expect from him as a nation is to always keep the current government in place and is to always bring back the voice to the people. I do believe in, in redemption, like a person has a chance to redeem themselves. My hopes for the future is to, to, to take Belize from a developing country to a developed country. My hope for the future is that there are more opportunities for the youth. That we the youth are given the chance to be leaders and have a voice. And most importantly, that we stand up for our rights and fight for what we believe in. There is not enough support for youth that get into gangs or drugs here. Um, once they, pretty much once they get into a gang, they don't get out of it. The things that Shineborough could do to improve the lives of Belize is put Belizeans first. If they're clearly making a change and trying to turn a new leaf, I don't think it should affect their lives in their late 20s, no. If you really want to be a leader, I think you need to have a clear heart and a clear mind and that you need to make your own path. Don't follow in the path of the previous government. It would be extremely wrong of me to say that the 11th Amendment is of importance when we have many other issues that need to be tackled. If I had one message to Shine Barrow, I would say to stand strong in what you believe in and always remember to be humble and don't forget where you came from. I'm not in the business of defending Mr. Barrow at all. T is not the concern here. The concern here is that this law tells people that if you've ever made a mistake in life, it excludes you from running for the highest office or institution in the country. That is problematic. What are my thoughts on rapper turned politician? Anything is possible. <laughs> he needs to do what he was elected to do, which was to serve the people of Belize and make the people of Belize make our lives better.
I think we are one of the most blessed countries in the world, but I think we have a lot of work to do. After you were sworn in, you sent out a tweet mentioning the disenfranchised, overlooked, and underprivileged. Uh, three words that black people here in America know all too well. Uh, so with those three words in mind, what is the plan for the organization that you are now a like, like head figure of, the opposition? The, the United Democratic Party uh, has always been uh, the pro-poor party. You know, we've always subscribed to human development and, uh, you know, social aid uh, and education. Education is so important. Uh, education should be free. You know, we, we're spending tens of millions of dollars on infrastructure, uh, you know, building roads and highways. And I don't say that we don't need that, but we need uh, human infrastructure. So every time I go to the House of Representatives, I'm always fighting, you know, for, for relief, for social relief. I, I'm fighting for education. Uh, it shouldn't be about education assistance. Education needs to be free. If we don't do anything, we need to make education free because if people get educated, they'll be better human beings, they'll be better able to take care of themselves and be less of a burden on the government, less of a burden on the taxpayers. We wanna see uh, you know, uh, a Belize where people aren't getting uh, elected to serve themselves, you know, but again, to aid in the development of uh, the nation. It can't be about a person's self-interest uh, to enrich themselves. It has to be to enrich our society. So we're taking the steps to reform our party uh, as we speak to ensure, you know, that our leaders understand, you know, what the end game is and the end game is human development. So as we keep our eyes on Shine's situation, what's your message to people on getting engaged in, in the things that are going on in the political system, either in Belize or here in the States? My uh, advice, man, is to take a stand, you know, beginning with the youth. Let's bring the numbers together. Let's take a stand and, and because you have a voice. You know, so many people don't use the power where their voice is concerned. And they sit back and point fingers at everything that takes place. But when opportunity presents itself to take a stand, such as su the support of Shine, you know, we they, they, they sit down. So take a stand, you know what I mean, around the world because, and we're watching this thing uh, over in the U.S. because we understand that globally, you know, uh, it's like six and a half a dozen. You know what I mean? Not that far apart. All right, man, you heard it. Listen, Shine's fight is all of our fight. And it's not just because black issues anywhere are black issues everywhere. But this one in particular is personal. It's obvious certain people are invoking an already unjust American system into a political climate abroad. So here in the States, right, there's something called double jeopardy. That prohibits someone from being tried for the same crime twice. And while Shine isn't necessarily being tried again for his past crimes, it's obvious that rule of law is attempting to strip a completely rehabilitated man of his hard work and progress. And our people just can't stand for that. So what can you do from home? Well, for starters, you can put folks on what's happening, raise awareness, inform. We must understand that just because we leave the borders of this country, it does not make us impervious to the same kinds of treatment we receive here in the States. It's precisely why whenever I travel abroad, one of the first things I always ask is, how are black people treated there? So let's spread the word, because when we do that, it's just one small way of continuing the connection and building a bridge to our people across the world. And conversely, I have to say this, man, we must do the same when something beautiful happens. We should rejoice because all of it brings closeness, familiarity, and most importantly, solidarity. All right. Listen, family, this is a special episode of Revolt Black News. It's been my honor and privilege to be here with you. Ebony will be back this week for the usual. So make sure to tune in Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern only on Revolt. Again, I want to thank Sean Barrow, Jay Prince and all of our guests out in Belize. Until next time, I'm your guy, Rodney Ricard. Peace.